Hi, my name is Natalie Luco, and this is Physics Lab 4, Macroscopic View of DC and RC Circuits. Lab 4 uses simulated circuit to demonstrate its behaviors and the properties of electric currents and series, as well as tools like ammeters and voltmeters, and how they work. It also gives a deeper understanding of Ohm's Law and Capacitor Law through the use of hands-on experience, problem solving, and deriving calculations. Some of the major physics principles used were loop rule, current conservation, and potential differences. Equations like Ohm's law, I equals V over R, energy conservation, delta V capacitor plus delta V resistor is equal to zero, or Q over C minus IR is equal to zero, and then the idea of charging and discharging of a capacitor. So when a capacitor is charging, the current is flowing through a series containing a resistor, a battery, and a capacitor. The plate of the capacitor begins to take on the charge until it reaches the voltage of the battery and the current is zero, or the electrons stop flowing. The discharging of a capacitor, the capacitor is currently containing the same voltage of the battery, but if you charge the con uh, but if you change the connection to be the, just the resistor and the capacitor, the current begins to flow again and the charge leaves the capacitor stopping when it reaches a charge of zero. And the, current, and the current stops flowing yet again. In the first part of the experiment, we were looking at a series circuit and perform multiple tasks to determine different principles, like reversing the ammeter reverses the signs of the readings. And when swapping an ammeter out for a voltmeter, you find that the ammeter does not change and the voltmeter reads zero because the current is still flowing, 0.02 amps, since it is steady state and the sum of potential differences is equal to zero volts. This is proven below looking at the voltage graphed out throughout the entire circuit with the data points on the right in the table. Some of the other questions asked throughout the first bit of the experiment were predicting the current, which we predict to be 0.02 amps using the volts over resistance, and then actual ended up being 0.02 amps, the round trip potential differences summed to zero, which you can see on the previous slide, and you can calculate the resistance at any point using the volts over the current at 47 ohm resistor, you get 47.95 ohms. At the 100 ohm resistor, you get 102.05 ohms. And at the wire and ammeter, you get 0 ohms. The second experiment involves an RC circuit, which involves a battery, a capacitor, and a resistor. In this case, the resistor is a light bulb. So that we use two different light bulbs, a 10 ohm bulb and a 20 ohm bulb. So because it was very hard for me to determine the exact time that the electrons stop, I averaged three times to get 4.837 seconds for a 10 ohm bulb and 3.89 seconds for a 20 ohm bulb. When one connects the battery, the bulb and the capacitor, the bulb lights up and then dims. The th same thing happens when you immediately connect the capacitor to the bulb. This is the charging and discharging of the capacitor. We are able to determine that the RC circuit is in fact time dependent. If you look at the conservation of charge, the formula, that delta V capacitor plus delta V resistor is equal to zero, and then look at the values delta V is equal to Q over C, we can plug that into the equation and get Q over C minus IR is equal to zero. I is also equal to negative DQ over DT, adding that time factor. So if we plug that into the formula, we get Q over RC plus DQ over DT is equal to zero, which is a differential equation equal to delta V over delta V naught equal to E to the negative T over RC. If you take the natural log of both sides, you get to the time constant of negative one over RC. As the capacitor was discharging, we took 20 data points over 20 seconds, which can be seen in the graph on the right which is an exponential shape. However, if you take the natural log of that, you end up getting a graph with a downward linear slope of negative 0.166x. And then you can take negative one divided by that slope to get an RC of 6.002 seconds, which is almost identical to our actual RC, six seconds. This is a data application of the time constant. We were then asked two questions at the end of the lab that had to do with doing this experiment in real life versus simulation. Now if we were doing this in real life versus simulation, how would this change with an ammeter? 
Using an ammeter in real life would have slowed the circuit down slightly because the ammeter would have added some resistance. And now when it comes to using it with a battery, the real capacitor with no resistance in the circuit, it would take longer for the capacitor to reach full charge because the battery would add internal resistance to the circuit, slowing down the flow of the electrons. 